Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling news coming out of the United States. This is on military.com. Marine leaders highlight Norway's units roles as a as deterrent to Russia. But it's not so much that a deterrent of to Russia that's, that becomes the highlight of this story here. It's actually what one of the generals that recently visited this particular location in Norway said during his meeting. He spoke about how that at this particular time there are 300 Marines that are in rotation, but how that that could change overnight to 3,000 in just 24 hours, that, that they're ready there and deployed there for a reason. He goes on, he said, I hope I'm wrong, but there's a war coming. This was General Neller said this, you're in, you're in a fight here, and an information fight and a political fight by your presence. Neller later told the Marines that he expects the Pacific uh, and Russia to be in service operational points of focus as the nation looks beyond the fights in the Middle East and have stretched into the better part of two decades. That's very troubling news indeed when, the, when a Marine Corps general is actually stating to his men, he hopes he's wrong, but there's a war coming. Something Russia's been concerned about with the U.S. presence in Norway on its northern border there. Uh, and of course, the spark that could really get Russia going happens to be eastern Ukraine. Donetsk and Luhansk regions, in fact, both have declared autonomy from Ukraine, much like Crimea. They have voted for this, and Russia has backed it, backed uh, their, the separation from Ukraine, as well as giving them Russian rubles as their currency. Uh, but in the latest tensions that are going on there in Russia right now, excuse me, not in Russia, but in Ukraine, in eastern Ukraine, it was a rebel weapons factory that was blown up near the airport. Now, the Ukrainian military actually had control of this particular region at the time of the explosion, and there are some that are saying, some of the uh, people that are watching this from social media are saying that it was not a bomb that caused the explosion of the munition factory. So what actually happened, no one really knows, but I do believe that the rising tensions that are going on with eastern Ukraine, with both Russian forces coming in to back the uh, eastern citizens of Ukraine, as well as NATO backing and training, etc., of the Ukrainian forces to combat against eastern Ukraine. Petro Poshinko saying that he would not rest until all of Ukraine was liberated from, uh, as he considers it to be, Russian intervention inside of the country. And of course, is one reason why there's such a major push for uh, the sanctions staying on Russia. And yet at the same time, the Maidan coup was not something that was orchestrated by Russia to start with. In fact, if anything, Russia had all of its ducks in a row. They had uh, uh, President Yanukovych, who was more pro-Russian than pro-West. So Russia really had no need for a coup to begin. But nonetheless, a coup did begin and caused the collapse of the Ukrainian co country. Also causing uh, Crimea to secede from the actual uh, government there, joining back with Russia and now eastern part of Ukraine. So it seems like to me that this is where the trouble is all brewing and I don't see it settling down anytime soon. And of course, as General Mattis says today, storm clouds are gathering over Korean Peninsula. Another big issue going on right now. And uh, that's on Stars and Stripes, uh, the General Mattis over in this region here. Uh, stating here, Secretary of Defense James Mattis speaks with service members during a surprise visit to Naval Station Mayport, Florida on December the 21st, 2017, where he made this announcement there. So it seems like that, yes, North Korea is definitely on the target list. And of course, the latest UN sanctions, new UNS, uh, UNSC resolution slashes oil and petroleum supplies to North Korea over the latest missile launch that was done in North Korea. Uh, kind of seems like to me that is probably exactly what the U.S. wants before a war, and that is to limit the amount of oil reserves that Kim Jong-un can get his hands on, so therefore he cannot use his weapons as effectively. So certainly seems that way from what we can see there. The clashes going on inside of, uh, uh, inside of uh, Jerusalem there near Ramallah, are still very heated up, very intense there, the day of rage yet again in Israel today. 
And uh, of course, as this rage continues on and as this trouble continues on in, in uh, Israel there, it is getting completely out of hand. RT News has uh, been covering this, uh, this particular clashes that are going on there. And to me, it is all orchestrated for the simple reason is if they put enough problems in Jerusalem, then they will justify turning Jerusalem into an international city. Uh, now, I do believe that they're still going to keep with what the agreement was back in 1993 within Shimon Peres and the Vatican, uh, uh, Vatican uh, Pope John Paul II, I believe, was at that time there. And this is something that was negotiated already for a two-state deal. East Jerusalem becoming the capital of the Palestinians, West Jerusalem the capital of Israel. But the old city coming under the authority of the Vatican as a uh, international city and of course uh, the UN being the military that they would have in place there. So I can certainly see everything is lining up for exactly that. And uh, one other story I wanted to share with you guys there. Let me just pause this here so we don't pick up the sound on both of these videos here. Uh, this right here, report coming from I-24 News. And very troubling, the Dead Sea drying up. Now, we've been seeing this for years ourselves as the water levels have dropped. Uh, the big holes that are being created and of course the reason why there's so many sinkholes around the Dead Sea is because of the huge layer of salt that is underneath that underneath the ground there. And as the underground waters work their way through the mountains and through the soil itself and work their way into the Dead Sea, it is undermining those salts, melting them, and then because the water level underground is not high enough, and therefore that salt collapses and causes the massive sinkholes. That's according to one scientist in this video here. Uh, so I'll share the link with you because it is very troubling how much the Dead Sea is being affected. And it's all because they say, well, environment is to blame, but uh, they do note in the video as well the, the manufacturers that are pulling the water from the Dead Sea in order to be able to make uh, beauty products. And I think that's got to do with a lot of it, not to mention the damming up of the Jordan River in so many areas there to where the Jordan River just does not flow into the Dead Sea anymore like it used to. So who knows, maybe they will. They are considering building a pipeline from either the, uh, from the Red Sea or even the Mediterranean to the Dead Sea in order to try to help the levels to come back up to normal levels. Anyway, very troubling indeed, uh, as everything right now that's going on in Israel is becoming troubling. And I am battling a very difficult sinus situation, so my brain is thinking just a little bit slow today. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for watching, and Shabbat Shalom. Oh, by the way, real quick as I get ready to leave here, uh, we were the other day, this is just kind of an offside note here, just we were there in the bank the other day here in Orlando and uh, doing some business for my father-in-law. And someone come in to recognize who I was, some brother that came in, and I was unable to get to say hello to him. Really wished I could have got to say hello. But anyway, brother, if you happen to be listening tonight, God bless you, and I am so sorry. They had me on the phone at the bank there talking to another bank, and, and it was just, uh, my poor brain was just all tied up. Anyway, God bless you. We love you. Thank you for watching, and thank you for uh, contributing to this ministry. Shalom.